بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدي هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So we're just going to continue from where we left off last week inshallah brothers So um, we were going through where the Sheikh was explaining um, the six pillars of Iman so he's explaining each pillar and what its meanings are and what it is upon us to believe with regards to those pillars. So we were halfway through. Look at the pages. We were halfway through the pillar of the belief in the angels. So if you look over here, inshallah, just this section here. <clears throat> the first paragraph of this page that's on the page that you can see then the sheikh he says he was talking about a book last week uh, with regards to uh, you know how we understand what an angel is and what it actually means but he mentioned some books from some of the scholars of misguidance who have explained the meaning of an angel or angels in the incorrect way so he mentioned this book so he says here he says وكتاب إحياء علوم الدين للغزالي فيه توام وفيه بلايا وإن كان فيه شيء من الخير والفوائد لكن فيه من المهلكات والسموم الشيء الكثير وهو كتاب مختلط شره أكثر من خيره فلا يليق بالمبتدع أو العام أن يطالع أن يطالع فيه إلا إذا كان عنده علم وتمييز بين الحق والباطل. So then the Sheikh he mentions this book. Uh, as you remember, whoever attended the lesson last week or listened to the lesson last week, they'll know that we finished around about here. The Sheikh mentions it in the paragraph before this paragraph, and he mentions it. He says that um, this book called Ihya Ulum al Din by uh, Ghazali one of the misguided scholars of the past and um, he mentions that in this book that is written there are many you know trials and tribulations within it from, from what he's written of incorrect information that's in there and so obviously misleading the people who are not able to distinguish from truth and falsehood so the sheikh he mentions here that there's a lot of like things that cause destruction within his book as in your belief, it'll destroy your belief uh, and cause problems for your belief and take you away from the correct belief, basically. And he says that in the book, there are many evil things in there. Even though there is benefit in there, there's more evil and there's more harm than the actual benefit. So he says, the beginner in knowledge like us, the beginners in knowledge, then is better for us to stay away from looking into those books because we may be misled by those or what's written within or what's contained within those books. And the Sheikh says that these sort of books that may contain slight benefit that a scholar or somebody more knowledgeable may want to extract from there, then, you know, they need to be able to be in a position where they can, uh, they can differentiate, uh, differentiate between truth and falsehood. Yeah. So then the Sheikh goes on to say, he says, talking about the angels, he says, Wal malaikatu laysu ma'anin kama yakul, balil malaikatu ajsamun wa ashkalun yatashakaluna bi ashkalin a'tahumullah al kudra alayha. Walihada kana jibril alayhi salam. يأتي إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في سورة رجل فأعطاهم الله القدرة 
على التشكل في أشكال من من أجل مصلحة بني آدم لأن لأن بني آدم لا يطيقون رؤية الملائكة على خلقتهم التي خلقهم الله عليها وإنما يأتون إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في سورة رجل رفقا ببني آدم ولا يرون على سورتهم وحقيقتهم إلا عند العذاب قال تعالى يوم يرون الملائكة لا بشرى يوم إذن للمجرمين وعند الموت يعاينهم الإنسان يرى ملائكة يرى ملائكة الموت لكن في الدنيا وعلى قيد الحياة لا يراهم لأنه لا يطيق رؤيتهم خلقهم الله من نور وخلق الشياطين من نار كما في القرآن وخلق آدم من تراب فلله على كل شيء قدير أو فالله على كل شيء قدير So let, we'll just stop there for a second. We'll just stop there for a second so we can carry on and stay focused, inshallah. So the, the sheikh here, he says that the angels, they aren't meanings like how some of these misguided scholars have said, but they, they've said that they're just meanings, they mean things. They're not, they didn't believe that they were actual forms or life forms as the correct belief is, isn't it? Yeah. So the sheikh, he says that the, the angels, uh, they are not just meanings as they say rather the angels they are they are life forms they have body they, they have a body and they have they have shapes you know they 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 they're a life form basically that allah has given them that right you know and they have abilities as well so the sheikh says this is the reason for example why uh, or as an example jibril alayhi salam came to the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam uh, uh, in the form of a man So The Sheikh says here that Allah has given them The ability to change form You know In order or for the reason For the benefit of Bani Adam For the benefit of us and Al-Insan Yeah, humankind He says because Bani Adam we, Us, we don't have the ability To see the uh, angels in their original forms we're not able we don't allah has not given us that ability so you know they come in the form of 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 a man you know just like uh, any other man for example yeah so that we can see from the same species you know and that's uh you know as a favor for example and you know for mankind and so uh we don't see them upon their original forms. Yeah. Except only when punishment comes. So the Sheikh gives an, uh, um, an ayah, he quotes an ayah regarding this, this uh, as he mentions, except when they, uh, when punishment occurs. So if we go to the Quran translation, the meaning of the Quran, then if you go to Surah Al Furqan, verse 22, which we read in Arabic, give me one second, let me find that. Verse 22, let's read the meaning. On the day they will see the angels, no glad tidings will there be for the criminals, disbelievers, polytheists, sinners, etc. that day. And there the angels will say all kinds of glad tidings are forbidden for you. None will be allowed to enter paradise except the one who said La ilaha illallah. None has a right to be worshipped in truth except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and acted practically on its legal orders and obligations. So that's the whole ayah that we've read, yeah? So that's uh, the evidence that the Sheikh brings, brings uh, for his statement. And then the Sheikh says here, um, just after the ayah, he says, and so we only see the angels um, in this situation when the punishment comes, uh, when we, when, um, when uh, death comes, the angel of death, for example, and you can see, we'll be able to see the actual angel here yeah, in his original form. For example, the angel of death. However, in the in the in the dunya, in the worldly life, and so long as we're uh, we are living and breathing on this planet, we don't see them in their 
original form because we haven't been given the ability in this worldly life to do that. Uh, and Allah has created them from light, as we know. The angels are created from light, nur, and the shayateen are created from nar, or the jinn, they are created from fire. As we know from the Quran, from the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Bani Adam, humankind, are created from clay, yeah, or the earth, yeah, clay, for example. And uh, Allah is uh, capable of anything or everything, yeah. So then the Shaykh continues and he says, Wal kufar ya'taqiduna anna al-malaikata banat Allah. Qala ta'ala, wa ja'alu al-malaikata al-ladhina hum ibadu al-rahmani inatha ashahidu khalqahum Satuktabu shahadatuhum wa yus'alun. Zukhra verse 19. So then the Shaykh says, he mentioned something, and you know, we should pay attention to this, that the disbelievers, many of them, but the disbelievers in general, they believe that the angels are the daughters of Allah. A'udhu Billah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in his book, the ayah that we just read from Surah to Zukhruf. So let's go there. Surah to Zukhruf, verse 19 the meaning and they make the angels who themselves are slaves to the most beneficent Allah they make them females did they witness their creation their evidence will be recorded and they will be questioned and asked about what they said yeah so that's the evidence for that so now we've completed that section about the belief in the angels now we move on to the third pillar and the third pillar is Al-Imanu bi kutubihi. So having belief in the books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Shaykh he says here, وَهِيَ الْكِتَابُ الَّتِي وَهِيَ الْكُتُبُ الَّتِي أَنزَلَهَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ الرَّسُولِ هِدَايَةِ الْبَشَرِ نُؤْمِنُ بِأَنَّهَا كَلَامُ اللَّهِ حَقِيقَةً وَنُؤْمِنُ بِمَا سَمَّ اللَّهُ مِنْهَا وَمَا لَمْ يُسَمْ سمى الله لنا منها التوراة والإنجيل والزبور والقرآن العظيم وصحف إبراهيم وموسى والزبور فنؤمن بها ونؤمن بما لم يسمه الله منها فالإيمان بالكتب السابقة يكون إيمانا مجملا والإيمان بالقرآن يكون إيمانا مفصلا بكل ما فيه لأنه كتابنا وأنزل على نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم فمن جحد آية أو حرفا من حروفه فهو كافر مرتد عن الإسلام. So then the Sheikh he says the third pillar having belief in all of the books that Allah has revealed to the prophets and messengers and he says here the Sheikh he says حفظ الله he says these are the books which Allah revealed upon his messengers for the reason of guiding the people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala and the right way, the right path, the right religion. So we believe we believe in we believe in them, you know, the speech of Allah. Yeah, we believe in them, we believe in the speech of Allah. In reality, we believe in them, yeah. And we believe in that which Allah Named and, and we believe in that which Allah has not named to us. So, for example, there are books in the that Allah has mentioned in the Quran, like the Torah, like the Sheikh says here, the Torah and the Zabur, the uh, Psalms of David, uh, etc., and the scrolls of Ibrahim. That we believe in what's been named to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we also believe in that which he, Allah hasn't given the you know the knowledge for. That we believe in all of His books, wherever He is revealed, we believe in them. So we believe in them. That's what the Sheikh says. And he says, and we believe in that which he hasn't mentioned to us explicitly. So for example, the Sheikh says, for, uh, the Iman in the books, the previous books that were revealed, we believe them in a general manner. We believe them in a general manner. However, the belief in the Quran, al Karim, then our belief in that is detailed, it's a complete and detailed belief that everything that which is in it, from laws, from information, etc. So then the Sheikh mentions here that 
it's why why do we do that? It's because it's our book, that's why. It's our book that was revealed to the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, was revealed to the Prophet sallallahu and his Ummah. And it was revealed to the Prophet sallallahu So the Shaykh says here, very important now, to pay attention here as well, that whoever rejects a verse from the Qur'an, or even a word or a letter from the Qur'an, then he is a disbeliever, uh, one who has turned away from Islam. So let's continue because inshallah, our plan today is to finish this section so we can start next week on a brand new chapter, inshallah. So let's carry on going. So then Shaykh says, وَكَذَلِكَ مَنْ آمَنَ بِبَعْدِ الْقُرْآنِ وَكَفْرَ بِبَعْدِ فَهُوَ كَافِرٌ وَكَذَلِكَ مَنْ آمَنَ بِبَعْدِ الْكُتُبِ وَكَفْرَ بِبَعْدِ فَهُوَ كَافِرٌ وَمَنْ قَالَ أَنَا أُؤْمِنُ بِالْقُرْآنِ بِالْقُرْآنِ وَلَا أُؤْمِنُ بِالْبِتَوْرَاتِ وَالْإِنْجِيلِ فَهُوَ كَافِرٌ أَوْ قَالَ أُؤْمِنُ بِالْتَوْرَاتِ وَالْإِنْجِيلِ وَلَا أُؤْمِنُ بِالزَّبُورِ الَّذِي أَنْزَلَ عَلَى دَاوُودَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامُ فَهُوَ كَافِرٌ قَالَ تَعَالَى وَآتَيْنَا دَاوُودَ زَبُورًا أَوْ أَنْكَرَ صُحُفَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ فَهُوَ كَافِرٌ لِأَنَّهُ مُكَذِّبٌ لِلَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ وَمُكَذِّبٌ لِرُسُلِهِ فَهُوَ كَافِرٌ لِأَنَّهُ جَهَدَ رُكْنًا مِنْ أَرْكَانِ الْإِيمَانِ Then the Shaykh, he continues from where he left off and he says, likewise, whoever believes in some of the Qur'an and disbelieves in some of it, he's a disbeliever. And likewise, whoever believes in some of the books that Allah revealed and sent down and disbelieves in some of them, he is a disbeliever. And whoever says this, the likes of, I believe in the Qur'an and I don't believe in the Torah, and I don't believe in the Injil, he is a kafir. Or if he says, I believe in the Torah and the Injil, the Gospel, so I believe in the Torah and the Gospel, and I don't believe in the Psalms that were sent to David, then he is a kafir. And then the Sheikh brings an ayah from Surah An-Nisa, so let's uh, have a look at the meaning to help us understand this better. It is verse 163. So let's go there. I'll read the whole ayah. Verily we have inspired you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa as we inspired Nuh, Noah, and the prophets after him. We also inspired Ibrahim, Ismail, Ishaq, Yaqub, and Al-Asbat, the twelve sons of Yaqub, Isa, Ayyub, Yunus, Harun, and Sulaiman. And to Dawood we gave him the Zabur. And that, that we should pay attention to, towards the end as well, the last part. And to Dawood, we gave him the Zabur. Yeah, the Psalms. And whoever doesn't believe in these books that Allah has revealed previously, and the Quran as well, of course, likewise, if he believes in some and rejects some, then he's a kafir. We have to believe in all of them. As the Sheikh mentioned, just to clarify that the previous books, we believe them in a general manner, that you know Allah sent them down to their people. However, we believe in the Quran fully, everything that's within it. And that's our final reference for us to follow. Yeah, we don't say, oh, well, the Quran's here and uh, we, there's also the Bible there and whatever else. Uh, and we need to follow the laws in there. No, because the final revelation, the Quran, it abrogates everything that came before it in terms of law. In terms of the law and everything. Of course, all of the uh, prophets and messengers were upon the Tawheed of Allah as the Sheikhs mentioned in the starting of this book and we've gone through in the other books as well, that all of the prophets and messengers are upon the Tawheed of Allah. That's the general Islam. But the specific, what they came with, um, the rulings, they vary from time to time, they varied. And so therefore for us, the Prophet ﷺ, uh, came with the Quran. And so that's our final uh, constitution for us. You know, we follow it and that's our final book and it abrogates everything else that came before it. So um, the Shaykh continues and he says here, and so if anybody disbelieves in, in any of these, what the Shaykh has mentioned in this paragraph, then, then you know, he's a kafir. And that's because he's, 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 he's as, as if he's saying that Allah has lied and the, prophet, the, the messengers have lied, basically. So then we move on to the next uh, pillar, and that is Al-Imanu bir rusuli So having... Uh, belief in his messengers. All of, we believe in all of the messengers, right? That's part of our iman as well. So the Shaykh, he goes on to say, he says, 
الايمان بالرسل جميعهم جميعهم من اولهم الى اخرهم من من سمى الله منهم ومن لم يسم نؤمن بهم جميعا وانهم رسل الله حقا جاءوا بالرساله ويل وبلغوها لاممهم so likewise with the messengers we believe in all of them like sheikh says here we believe in all of them from the from the beginning to the end the, from the ones who came before we believe in all of them and we believe in the final messenger our messenger muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as well of course so we we likewise with the books we we believe in that what allah has named and given us knowledge of we believe in them by their name don't we at the same time what all the knowledge that allah hasn't given us we also we believe in it all what we know and what we don't know we know that all of the messengers whether we know them by name or not we believe in them that they're the messengers of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so then the shaykh goes on to say he says فَمَنْ كَفَرَ بِنَبِيٍ وَاحِدٍ فَهُوَ كَافِرٌ بِجَمِيعِ الرُّسُلِ لِقَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى So this is important to notice here and that is that whoever disbelieves in one of the messengers he has disbelieved in all of them. So if you just disbelieve in one you've disbelieved in, disbelieved in all of them. So the importance here is that we need to make sure that you know we have this iman intact and it's clarified to us it's clear that we believe in all of the messengers that Allah sent yeah and so then the sheikh gives this evidence here uh, from surah an-nisa verse 150 to 152 so let's read it inna alladhina yakfuruna billahi wa rusulihi wa yuriduna an yufarriqu bayna Allah wa rusulihi wa yaquluna nu'minu bi ba'dhin wa nakfuru bi ba'dhin wa yuriduna أن يتخذوا بين ذلك سبيلا أولئك هم الكافرون حقا وأعتدنا للكافرين عذاب مهينا والذين آمنوا بالله ورسله ولم يفرقوا بين أحد منهم أولئك سوف يؤتيهم أجورهم وكان الله غفور رحيم So the meaning of those ayahs that we read let's go to those ayahs 150 to 152 So let's read the meaning. Verily, those who disbelieve in Allah and His messengers and wish to make distinction between Allah and His messengers by believing in Allah and disbelieving in His messengers, saying, "We believe in some but reject others," and wish to adopt a way in between, they are in truth disbelievers, and we have prepared for the disbelievers a humiliating torment. And those who believe in Allah and His messenger and make no distinction between any of them, the messengers, we shall give them their rewards, and Allah is ever oft forgiving, most merciful. So that clarifies what the Sheikh has said. May Allah preserve him. So then, uh, let's continue. So to the next paragraph, the Sheikh he says, "Fal kufru bi baniin, fal fal kufru bi nabiin wahidin, or bi rasulin kafar bil jami." ولهذا قال كذبت قوم نوح المرسلين مع أنهم كذبوا نوحا. فتكذيبهم لنوح صار تكذيبا لبقية المرسلين وكذلك من كفر بيسا ومحمد كاليهود أو كفر بمحمد كالنصارى فإنه كافر بالجميع لا بد من الإيمان بجميع الرسل عليهم الصلاة والسلام من سمى الله منهم ومن لم يسم So the Sheikh says So disbelieving in a messenger or a prophet from the prophets and messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he then has disbelieved in all of them. As mentioned in the ayah, كَذَّبَتْ قَوْمُ نُوْهِمْ مُرْسَلِينَ that the, that the people of uh, Nuh, they, they rejected the messengers. They rejected the messengers and said, oh no, it's a lie, you know. They're not messengers, this is all a lie. And with that, you know, they also, um, you know, rejected Nuh alayhi salam, their own prophet messenger. And so their lies and their rejection uh, for Nuh alayhi salam became a rejection for all of the messengers that came before him. And all of the messengers, whether they know them or they didn't. Yeah, so this is that principle that the Sheikh has been talking about. Yeah. 
so then the Sheikh says, and likewise, as for, as a further example for us to cement, is that whoever disbelieves, for example, in Isa alayhi salam or Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, like the like the Jews do, they reject Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam and they reject Isa alayhi salam, or who disbelieve in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, like the Christians, they reject Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. For indeed, this in this state, the person is a disbeliever of all of the messengers. Even if he says he believes in one of them, he actually disbelieves in all of them as per the principle the Shaykh mentioned. So the Shaykh says in Kumbad, and without a doubt, it's a must that we have Iman in all of the messenger, prophets and messengers, alayhi salatu wasalam, the ones that Allah mentioned by name and the ones where Allah did not mention them. We believe in all of them. Yeah? And then the Shaykh says, وَقَدْ سَمَّ اللَّهُ مِنْهُمْ كَمَا فِي سُورَةِ الْأَنْعَامِ So then the Shaykh says, like in an example where uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned the names of the Prophets, some of the names of the Prophets. He mentions a long ayah as you can see here. Let's read. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَتِلْكَ حُجَّتُنَا آتَيْنَاهَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ عَلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ نَرْفَعُ دَرَجَاتٍ مَنْ نَشَاءُ إِنَّ رَبَّكَ حَكِيمٌ عَلِيمٌ وَوَهَبَنَا لَهُ إِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبٌ كُلًّا هَدَيْنَا وَنُوحًا هَدَيْنَا مِنْ قَبْلُ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِهِ دَاوُودَ وَسُلَيْمَانَ وَأَيُّوبَ وَيُوسُفَ وَمُوسَ وَهَارُونَ وَكَذَلِكَ نَجْزِي الْمُحْسِنِينَ وَزَكَرِيَّا وَيَحْيَى وَعِيسَى وَإِلْيَاسَ كُلٌّ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ وَإِسْمَاعِيلَ وَالْيَسَعَ وَيُونُسَ وَلُوطًا وَكُلٌّ فَضَّلْنَا عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ سُورَةُ الْأَنْعَامِ verse 83 to 86 فَذَكَرَ جُمْلَةً مِّنْهُمْ فِي هَذِي الْآيَاتِ وَفِي آيَةٍ أُخْرَى وَفِي آيَاتٍ أُخْرَى فَنُؤْمِنُ بِمَنْ سَمَّ اللَّهُ مِنْهُمْ وَنُؤْمِنُ بِمَنْ لَمْ يُسَمِّ اللَّهُ مِنْهُمْ So, the Shaykh, he mentions this long ayah. So, let's look at the meaning of that, inshaAllah. So, Surah Al-An'am, let's go there. Verse um, 88. 3 to 86 that's what we said let's read inshallah and that was our proof which we gave Ibrahim against his people we raise whom we will in degrees certainly your Lord is all wise all knowing and we bestowed upon him Ishaq and Yaqub each of them we guided and before him we guided Nuh and among his progeny Dawood, Suleiman, Ayyub, Yusuf Musa and Harun, thus do we reward the good doers. And Zakaria and Yahya and Isa and Ilyas, each one of them was of the righteous. And Ismail and al and Yunus and Lut, and each one of them we preferred above the Alameen, mankind, jinns, and of, uh, of their times. So as you can see, the Sheikh says, this is an example for us where Allah has named uh, generally, Allah has named uh, some of the prophets and messengers, yeah, and has given us that knowledge of their names, yeah, and in other ayahs as well throughout the Quran, as we as we know. So finally, the Sheikh just wants to <coughs> cement this into our brains, and he says that so we believe in that which Allah has mentioned to us by name in terms of the prophets and messengers, and also the ones where Allah has not mentioned by name. We still we believe in all of the messengers, whether we know them by name or not. Al Khamis and the fifth pillar, Al Yawmul Akhir. So the fifth pillar of Iman is the belief in the day or the last day, the last day. Yawmul Al Yawmul Akhir, Al Imanu Bil Yawmul Akhir, Wa Rukunul Khamis, Wa Al Yawmul Akhir, Al Muradu Bihi Yawmul Qiyamati, Summiya Bil Yawmul Akhir. لِأَنَّهُ بَعْدَ الْيَوْمِ الْأَوْلِ وَهُوَ يَوْمُ الدُّنْيَا الدُّنْيَا هِيَ الْيَوْمُ الْأَوْلِ وَالْقِيَامَةُ هِيَ الْيَوْمُ الْآخِرِ وَالْإِيمَانُ بِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ هُوَ الْإِيمَانُ بِمَا بَعْدَ الْمَوْتِ مِنْ عَذَابِ الْقَبْرِ وَنَيْمِهِ وَسُعَالِ الْمَلَكَيْنِ فِي الْقَبْرِ وَكُلُّ مَا يَكُونُ بَعْدَ الْقَبْرِ فَهُوَ مِنْ الْإِيمَانِ بِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَكَذَلِكَ الْإِيمَانُ بِالْبَعْثِ وَالنُّشُورِ وَالْمَحْتَرْ وَالْحِسَابِ وَوَزْنِ الْعَمَالِ وَالصِّرَاطِ وَالْمِيزَانِ الَّذِي تُوزَنُ بِهِ الْحَسَنَاتِ وَالسَّيَّعَاتِ وَالْجَنَّةُ وَالنَّارِ 
فتفاصيل ما يحصل في اليوم الآخر نؤمن بها جملة وتفصيلا بداية من الموت إلى أن يت أن يستقر أهل الجنة في الجنة وأهل النار في النار كل ما صح من هذا نؤمن به ولا نشك في شيء منه فمن شك في شيء منه فهو كافر مرتد عن الإسلام كل هذا يطلق عليه اليوم الآخر وما فيه so the sheikh mentions very very important point now uh, so let's pay attention and we're getting towards the end of the lesson alhamdulillah we're not doing too badly for time either so pay attention to this because very very important so the sheikh mentions here some very important points and he says the last day so the fifth pillar belief in the last day and he says um belief in the last day and it is a pillar it's the fifth pillar of iman and the last day the purpose or the meaning behind it is yawmul qiyamah yeah the day of standing and it was named and is named the last day because it is the day after the first day Sheikh is going to explain what that means it's the day after the first day and the meaning of the first day here is that it's the day it's the life of the dunya and after the life of the dunya is that's a day and the next day it is the last day which is what happens after the dunya yeah and also and having belief in the last day and what it encompasses then it encompasses for example that we have a belief uh, of life after death yeah so uh, after death that there is punishment of the grave so all these important things now we need to remember these write them down you know uh, you know go back to them but you know all all of this iman that we're talking about from the a couple of lessons before and this inshallah and towards the end we need to make sure that we understand this properly because it's a matter of uh, any kind of doubt in these affairs it'll just lead you to go for automatically you'll co- you, you'll you'll you leave islam so you need to make sure you have this pinned down so the sheikh he says for example in the last day what are the things that we believe of the last day yeah um uh yawm al akhir then it is the punishment of the grave and also the blessings that are from that as well so the punishment and the blessings the good of it and the bad of it yeah the questioning of the two angels who are going to question each person in their grave we need to believe this as well and all of that uh, um and all of that and whatever comes after that we need to believe in that with regards to the last day and likewise uh, believing in resurrection that we're going to be resurrected and that we're going to be brought back and we're going to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be judged and there will be an account yeah so we'll be accounted for our good and bad deeds will be accounted for our actions will be weighed we need to believe in the scales that the actions are going to be weighed and we need to believe in the scales that they exist and there are scales we need to believe in the sirat that we're going to cross and people are some people are going to fall off and other people who are successful are going to cross it's an actual sirat it's a bridge <clears throat> we need to believe in the scales like the sheikh says that we need to also believe that our good and bad deeds are going to be weighed in those scales we need to also believe that that jannah exists that paradise exists and that the hellfire exists and we need to believe in the details of the uh, the the final day <coughs> and the day of standing yawm al qiyamah yawm al akhir and we believe it from its generalities as well as its specifics everything we believe in all of that and so the sheikh he goes on to say here that that from death we need to believe everything from the point of where death starts yeah because that's when al yawm al akhir starts for each person yeah from the moment of death to the point at which everybody will be judged and they either will be judged and be successful and go to the go to paradise or they'll be judged and be unsuccessful based on what they did in on in this dunya in this worldly life and go to the hellfire yeah so 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 we need to and have firm belief and the sheikh says everything that has obviously been authenticated yeah from the quran and the hadith of course we believe in that yeah any doubt in the affairs 
here will lead you to become a disbeliever. So that's why I mentioned it's important because the Sheikh mentions extremely important points here that we need to make sure that we are firm on and we ask Allah for firmness. I mean, upon the six pillars of Iman. Now we go on to the final pillar. And inshallah, once we've, we've completed this, then uh, we'll conclude the lesson and we'll continue inshallah next week. So we've got another maybe 10 minutes, I think. And inshallah, we will finish. So then the Shaykh, he says, Ar-Ruknu Sadis, the sixth pillar of Iman. Tu'minu bil qadri khayrihi wa sharrihi. That you believe in what Allah has preordained, yeah, from his qadr, preordained and willed from his qadr, the good of it and the bad of it. We believe in both. We believe in whatever Allah's will for us, the good of it and the bad of it. This is the sixth pillar of Iman. The Shaykh, he goes on to say, تُؤْمِنُوا بِأَنَّمَا يَجْرِي فِي هَذَا الْقَوْنِ مِنْ خَيْرِ أَوْ شَرْ مِنْ كُفْرْ وَإِيمَانِ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ وَنِقْمَةٍ مِنْ رَخَاءٍ وَشِدَّةٍ مِنْ مَرَضٍ وَصِحَّةٍ مِنْ حَيَاةٍ وَمَوْتٍ كُلُّ مَا يَجْرِي فِي هَذَا الْقَوْنِ فَإِنَّهُ مُقَدَّرٌ لَمْ يَكُنْ أَسَدَفَ أَوْ يَكُنْ أَمْرًا مُسْتَأْنَفَ أي أنه مبتدأ لم يسبق أن قدر تؤمن بهذا كل كله بأنه بقضاء الله وقدره وتؤمن بأن ما أصابك لم يكن ليخطئك وما أخطأك لم يكن ليصيبك وأن هذا بقضاء الله وقدره قال تعالى ما أصاب من مصيبة في الأرض ولا في أنفسكم إلا في كتاب من قبل أن نبرأها إن ذلك على الله يسير سورة الحديد verse 22 هذا هو الإيمان بالقدر so let's uh, um, translate this inshallah um, the starting of this uh, paragraph uh, introduction to uh, Rukun Sadis the sixth pillar the Sheikh says as mentioned uh, he says that um, the belief in Qadr, the, uh, the, you know, what Allah has willed and preordained for us, the good of it and the bad of it. Then the Shaykh goes on to say, so everything that happens, you know, everything that happens in the world, you know, from good or evil, we believe in it, that it's been predefined, you know, willed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, so we believe in those uh, from the disbelief that's there, we believe that from the belief that's there, we believe um, uh, that all of this, for example, blessings and the opposite of blessings, um, ease and hardship, um, disease and good health, um, uh, life and death, etc. These things, they have been all preordained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah's willed them, yeah, previously, yeah, from the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so we believe that this, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has willed and preordained this for us. We don't believe that it just happened by chance. You know how the atheists say, or some people say from uh, from the misguided people, where they say, oh, it just happened by chance. You know, everything just came by chance. All these things happen by chance. No, we don't believe in that. We know that all of this is from the, what Allah has judged and willed and wanted. It's all that what Allah has wanted. Allah has preordained it from His Qadr. Yeah, it's, no, nothing happens by chance. Everything is written and everything runs and happens according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, for example, if you are inflicted by something, it's because Allah will that to happen. If you, you know, etc. And then the Shaykh, uh, uh, so, so as an important thing to mention is that we, we should never be afraid, you know, when something befalls us, we should never, we should always remember the qadr of Allah from the good of it and the bad of it, and we are patient upon it. You know, something might inflict us, we might lose our job. Um, you know, something bad may happen to us. There's a number of examples we can use, we can all probably relate to, you know, make our own examples or maybe have our own examples. But really, if we go back and think about it, it's the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so we should be patient upon it. And that's the best way. You know, you might feel a bit sad or something's happened, but you should always remember that Allah has ordained it for you or for us and that we are the slaves and servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So what right do we have to say why did this happen to us? We should be patient and should be humble and uh, and in it is a reward, you know. So we have to remember these things because you can easily, we've probably all heard stories of people saying to us, maybe we said this to ourselves as well. Why is this happening to us? Why have this happened? Why has that happened? You know, but who are we to say this really? We're the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah does what he wills. So this is very important to remember this thing and this helps us with uh, maintaining our sixth pillar of Iman which is what we're discussing today inshallah. So then the Shaykh he gives us, he quotes an ayah from the Quran which we read and so if we go to the surah that we, uh, this ayah that we read from Surah Al-Hadid then let's go there and let's get the meaning inshallah and then hopefully we can have a better understanding inshallah. So then the Shaykh mentions here, he quotes this ayah from the Quran where Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says No calamity befalls on the earth or in yourselves But is inscribed in the book of decrees Allah al-mahfud Before we bring it into existence Verily that is easy for Allah So that explains what the shaykh has told us Yeah and this is from the speech of Allah Very clear for us Alhamdulillah Then the shaykh he says And this is having iman With the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah? And that Allah's preordained will And what Allah has decreed His decrees that's a better word to use. There we have decrees, alhamdulillah. So then the Shaykh goes on to say, Well, Iman bil Qadri, Yatadamanu, Arba Adarajatim, Min Man Lam Yu'min Biha, Kulliha, Falaysa Mu'min and Bil Qadr. Now we need to pay attention to this as well. The Shaykh he says here that belief of Allah's decree or preordain, preordainments, then they consist of four, they have four levels, they encompass four levels. And whoever does not believe in in these four levels and doesn't understand and believe them properly, then you know, then he's, he's not a believer really, yeah. He's not a mu'min. He's not a mu'min bil qadr. He's not a believer in the qadr of Allah. So let's look at these four things now, and then we will finish the lesson, inshaAllah. The f- the first level, al martabatul ula al ilm. The first level is knowledge. So we need to have knowledge, right? Then the second level it is um, that we believe that everything, the Qadr that we're talking about, it's written in the preserved tablet. Yeah, that I mentioned in the ayah, the preserved tablet, is, it's, everything is written in there. The third level is the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah wills something, He wants something and He, he executes it. He does it. Yeah, so Allah has a will. And the fourth level, the fourth level is that is in terms of creation and existence. That Allah created everything and He brought it into existence. Four levels. Let's go through them. What do, what do each of them mean? The Shaykh he says, "Bi an Allah ali ma kul shay fil azal, il ali ma kul ma yajri ma kana wa ma yakun ila ma la nihaya. Allahu qad ali ma hu fil azal, qabla an yakun wa qabla an yaqa." Alimahu subhanahu wa ta'ala bi ilmihi al-qadim al-azli alladhi huwa mawsuf bihi azlan wa abada hadhihi martabat al-ilm faman jahadaha fahuwa kafir This might be a little bit difficult to understand so bear with me I'll try and uh, uh, translate in the easiest way possible We believe in terms of knowledge right that Allah has the knowledge of everything eternal knowledge yeah al-azl Al-Azli, that's what it means, it's eternal knowledge Allah has eternal knowledge That which exists, that which will never exist That which existed, that which is going to exist That which which was soon to become in existence Allah knows everything like that It's hard to envision But if you just take a step back and think about it You'll, you'll understand That Allah, He has eternal knowledge he has knowledge of all the things that will not exist, which is a bit hard to understand. But you might need some time to think about it. But easiest way to say this is that Allah has knowledge of everything. Everything, the things that exist, the things that will never exist, and the things that will soon to be exist, etc. That will exist like, like this, eternal knowledge. Yeah, this is what the Sheikh is saying here. So whoever disbelieves in this, then he has rejected um, uh, Qadr. Yeah, and therefore he is a disbeliever. 
Okay, bear that in mind. The second level of Qadr is believing in the preserved tablet and what is written inside. The Shaykh says, وَهِيَ أَنَّ اللَّهَ كَتَبَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ فِي اللَّوْحِ الْمَحْفُوظِ فَمَا يَجْرِي شَيْءٍ إِلَّا وَهُوَ مَكْتُوبٍ فِي اللَّوْحِ الْمَحْفُوظِ لَيْسَ هُنَاكَ شَيْءٍ يَجْرِي وَهُوَ غَيْرِ مَكْتُوبٍ وَلِهَذَا قَالَ تَعَالَى مَا أَصَابَ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ سورة الحديد The same ayah that we read earlier. Yeah, okay. يَأْنِي اللَّوْحَ الْمَحْفُوظِ كَتَبَ اللَّهُ فِيهِ مَكَادِيرِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم أول ما خلق الله القلم قال أكتب قال وما أكتب قال أكتب ما هو كائن إلى يوم القيامة فمن جهد الكتاب وقال وقال الله يعلم كل شيء لكنه لم يكتب في اللوح المحفوظ شيئا هذا كافر مرتد عن دين الإسلام not the important point now the second level of uh, قدر and that is that we believe in that everything is written in the preserved tablet which is called اللوح المحفوظ that everything is written in it right Everything that's going to happen is written in there. It's in preserved in there. That's what we need to believe. And the uh, Shaykh mentions the same ayah that we read the translation of just in the paragraph above. And uh, then the Shaykh says, meaning that in the law of Mahfuz, Allah, you know, has written all the qadr, all the decrees, everything that's going to happen, everything, all the decrees, they're all written in there. And that we believe in that they are written in there. Yeah. And then the Shaykh mentions a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said the first of the first thing that Allah created was the pen. And he said to it, write. And it said, what shall I write? And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, write that which is going to be in existence up until uh, the day of judgment, Yawm Al-Qiyamah. So then the Shaykh, he says here, so whoever rejects the the writing of this Lord Mahfuz, the, the writing in it, and he says, for example, Allah knows everything, but he hasn't written anything in the Lord Mahfuz. He hasn't written the thing in the Lord Mahfuz, but I do believe that Allah knows everything. If this person believes in this, like this, then he is a disbeliever, rejecter, and has left Islam. So we believe in that Allah knows everything in terms of knowledge, like we mentioned earlier, uh, uh, the Sheikh mentioned earlier, and then also that everything, all the decrees are written in the law al-mahfuz. Yep. The third level, Allah's will. Yeah, Mashia. So this is to do with Allah's will. That Allah does have a will. Allah wills and wants something, and He executes that. So what does that mean? The Shaykh he says, وَهِيَ أَنَّ اللَّهَ سُبْحَانُهُ يَشَاءَ الشَّيْءِ وَيُرِيدُهُ فَمَا مِنْ شَيْءٍ يَحْدُثْ إِلَّا وَقَدْ شَاءَهُ اللَّهُ وَأَرَادَهُ كَمَا فِي اللَّوْحِ الْمَحْفُوظِ وَكَمَا عَلِمَهُ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَالَى يَشَاءَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ يَشَاءَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ فِي وَقْتِهِ وَيُرِيدْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ فِي وَقْتٍ قُدُوثَهِ لا يقع شيء لا يقع شيء بدون مشيئة الله أو بدون إرادة الله فمن قال إن إن الأشياء تحدث بدون أن يشاءها الله أو يريدها فهذا كافر. so this uh, will be easy for us to understand إن شاء الله. so basically that Allah has a will and if He desires and wants something He executes it and nothing happens except by the will of Allah. Allah has willed it and it happens. it just it doesn't happen on its own randomly. Allah has willed everything and all of these things, they happen by Allah's will. Yeah. So whoever disbelieves in this, then they're a disbeliever. Whoever rejects this, they're a disbeliever. Even if they believed in all the other stuff. Yeah. That we've gone through. All the other parts of knowledge. In terms of the pillars. Final level with regards to Qadr. Al-Martabatul Rabi'ah. Martabatul Khalq wal Ijad. And this is to do with um, uh, creation what Allah has created and brought into existence. So the Shaykh, he says, Allahu khaliku kulli shay idha sha'ahu wa aradahu khalaqahu subhanahu wa ta'ala wa awjada fa kullu shay'in huwa makhlukin huwa makhlukun lillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala wa huwa man khalqillahi wa huwa 
فعل الإباد وهو فعل الإباد وكسب الإباد وكسب الإباد. So the Sheikh says here that uh, that Allah is the creator of everything as we all know, as all his brothers know. So if he willed something and wants to bring it into existence, create it and bring it into existence, then he can and he does. So everything is the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything is a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and uh, so for example, the creation of the actions of the, of the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, and what the servants earn, for example. Or do, yeah. Then the Sheikh says, "For this marathi balarba la buda min al imani biha wa illa lam yakun al insan mu'minan bil qadar martabat al ilm wal kitab wal mashia wal khalq wal ijad. Kullu hadi la buda min al imani biha. Faman jahada shay'an minha fa inna hu kafir murtad an din al Islam li anna hu jahada rukn min al arkan al iman wa huwa al iman bil qadar." So then the Sheikh says, finally, this paragraph here, he says to us that. Um, that these are the four levels with regards to Qadr. And he breaks them down. He says that, that we need to believe in these as mentioned uh, just now for us to be believers in the Qadr of Allah. So the level of knowledge, the level of um, the writing in the Lohan Mahfud, uh, the, uh, the, the third level which is to do with Allah's will and the final uh, level, the fourth level, which is to do with uh, creation and uh, bringing, being brought into existence. That Allah creates and brings His creation into existence. The Sheikh says it's incumbent that we believe in all of these four levels and that whoever rejects a thing from these four levels and he is a disbeliever uh, and is one who has turned away from the deen of Al Islam because he has. Um, rejected one of the pillars from the pillars of Al-Iman and it is Al-Iman Bil Qadr yeah the um, uh, the belief uh, uh, believing in the uh, preordainment or the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what is decreed um, which is Qadr so I think uh, we we finished there so next week inshallah what we will do is We'll continue from where we left off, which is this chapter here. And the next chapter is ad dalilu ala arkan al-Iman. So now the Shaykh in this lesson next week, inshallah, uh, when we start this lesson, ta'ala, the Shaykh is going to give us all the evidences with regards to all of these pillars. What are the evidences? So we have proof that we're learning with evidence and not just learning blindly. Yeah. So we're going to go through that next week. I think we've done enough for today. Alhamdulillah, we managed to get to the end of the lesson before the hour ends. So barakallah fikum, inshallah, we'll see you next week. Around the same time, but if there's a change in time, I'll let you know beforehand. Inshallah, I'll try my best. Barakallah fikum. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha ilan tu wa astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.